looking at the subject growing in faith through understanding growing in faith through understanding our objective is to understand the growth of faith by the force of understanding I said earlier on that every time your faith shifts level your victory shifts level for whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith your level of victory and your level of success on earth currently is tied to your level of faith if you don't like the victory you see move to a higher level in faith that is why it is important to grow your faith acts of the apostles chapter 8 verse 30 we saw the story of the Ethiopian eunuch riding a chariot and reading a scripture and Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and he said to him Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I accept some man to guide me? And he desired Philip that Philip would come and sit with him. He was reading the Bible, but he had no understanding. If somebody doesn't explain it to me, how will I understand? Then Philip sat with him. The Bible said he was reading from the book of Isaiah. After Philip explained from that scripture, verse 35, Philip asked him a question. Then Philip opened his mouth and began at the same scripture and preached unto him Jesus. That's right. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What is preventing me from being baptized? And Philip said, If thou believe with all thy heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. So it is from understanding to believe. First of all, he lacked the understanding. Then when the understanding came, the belief was effortless. Am I communicating? Let me say two things very quickly. Number one, by way of introduction or continuous introduction. Faith is a living force that grows. Because we are talking of growing your faith. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 verse 3 2 Thessalonians 1 3 he said we are bound to thank God always for you brethren as it is meet because that your faith groweth exceedingly faith is a living spiritual force that grows it grows your faith groweth. And the second thing to note is that understanding is a major tool or rather a major fuel for the growth of faith. Faith grows. 
and understanding grows faith. Faith grows. And understanding grows faith. We just read it. In Acts chapter 8 verse 30 to 31. We just read it. And then 33 to 35. Faith grows. And understanding grows faith. Romans chapter 10 verse 17 says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. That hearing and hearing. Hearing and hearing. That is understanding. Faith grows and understanding grows faith. And thirdly, let me add a thought. The growth of faith is the growth of victory. The growth of faith is the growth of victory. Any area where your faith has grown, in that area, your victory will grow. Any area where your faith has grown, in that area, your victory will grow. If it is in the area of divine health, where your faith has grown, your victory there grows. If it is in the area of divine preservation, that your faith has grown there your victory will increase if it is in the area of supernatural supplies your financial area your career area if your faith grows there your victory grows somebody say amen so the center of it all is understanding is a fuel for the growth of faith are we together so far is there anybody interested in the growth of your faith is there anybody here there is an area of your life where you want to see more results all right let's go on what kind of understanding causes faith to grow there are two kinds of understanding understandings if it is correct Number one is the number one the understanding of what faith is if you understand what faith is that understanding has the capacity to grow faith itself it's like understanding how to drive a car it makes you an expert it's like understanding how to fly an aircraft it's like understanding science. It's like understanding law. Anything you understand in that thing, you are outstanding. Understanding makes people outstanding. So if you understand what faith is, you will be outstanding in the operation of faith. It is not that people don't want to have faith. It is that they don't understand what it means, what faith means. Hello? So what kind of understanding grows faith? First, is the understanding of what faith is. Second, is the understanding of relevant scriptures. The understanding of what faith is and second is the understanding of relevant scriptures what do i mean if i am trusting god for faith to heal the sick then i i need to understand relevant scriptures that will build my faith in that area if i'm trusting god for faith for divine preservation and protection then i need understanding of relevant scriptures that will guarantee my preservation if, I, if I'm trusting God for faith, for supernatural supplies, then I need understanding of relevant scriptures that will guarantee effortless supplies. God speaking to you here, say amen. Is there anybody on the Facebook that God is speaking to? You also say amen. On the YouTube, on the WeTube, on the us. 
Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, we have two understandings. The first, what faith is. And the second, relevant scriptures. Now, let's go to the understanding. On Number one, understanding what faith is. Now, to understand what faith is, it is very important to understand what faith is not. <laughs> Do you understand? Or you don't want to understand? Before you can understand what faith is, it is very important to understand what faith is not. Let us do, you know, those kind of equations where you do eliminations. <laughs> what? So, first thing, this is now 1A, depending on how you are numbering it. What faith is not? What faith is not? One. Roman numeral one, depending on how you are numbering it. What faith is not? First, faith is not just mental assent. Mental assent. It is not mental assent. Mental assent means just mentally agreeing. It is well with you. I agree. You shall succeed. I agree. It's not just mental assent. There are many people who have mental assent that did not produce no result. Second, Faith is not just possibility thinking. Oh yes, I believe everything is possible. On the basis of what? I just believe everything is possible. It is not just possibility thinking. Possibility thinking will come out of faith. But it's not just possibility thinking. It's not just that. Because anybody can think possibly. Whether they are Christians or anything they are. And what we are defining is Bible faith. Bible faith. Bible faith is not mental assent. It is not just possibility thinking. Number three or third, faith is not just believing blindly. Well, I just believe. Uh, I don't have any reason to believe, but I just believe. It's not just blind belief. Fourthly, faith is not ordinary or natural boldness or bravery. No, it's not ordinary boldness or bravery. Let somebody say, let me, I, I can touch that snake, it will do me nothing. I can travel in the night. I'm, I, I don't normally fear anything. That can happen naturally for some people. But faith is not ordinary or natural boldness or bravery. Am I communicating? All these can come out of faith, but faith is beyond that. Finally, faith is not strong wish or desire for something. When somebody strongly wishes for something or strongly desires something, you say, I have faith for it. That's not, that is not just faith. There are many people who desire things and, and, they are not, and, and it is not that they are walking in faith. So faith is not just mental assent. It's not just possibility thinking. It's not just believing blindly. It is not ordinary boldness or bravery. And faith is not just strong wish or desire for something. We are talking about Bible faith. So what then is faith? So we are looking at what faith is. What is faith? Anybody following so far? All right. Faith is accessing. So we have looked at understanding, the understanding, two understandings, one, understanding what faith is, and then understanding of relevant scriptures. And now we have seen that we have seen what faith is not, and now we want to see what faith is. First, faith is accessing the thoughts and way 
of God. In order to experience the acts and wonders of God. Again, faith is accessing the thoughts and ways of God in order to experience the acts and the wonders of God. I'll break it down. In the book of Isaiah chapter 55 and in verse 8 and 9. He said, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. So we are dealing with the thoughts and ways of God. Psalm 103 verse 7. The Bible said, he made his ways known to Moses, so that the children of Israel can see his acts. What am I talking about? The thoughts and the ways of God. Breaking it down further, in faith, you see things the way God sees them. And you think, you begin to think the way God thinks on the basis of his word. And then you begin to experience the acts and the wonders of God. You, you see things. As you study scripture, you begin to see things the way God sees them. Everything is cheap. Everything is easy. The Lord takes pleasure in the prosperity of his servants. They obey and serve him. And so on. You begin to see things the way God sees them. Based on what he said. And you begin to think the way God thinks based on his word. And then you begin to experience the acts and the wonders of God. Am I communicating? Now look, this is the, the, the basic thing. You access the thoughts of God. And the Bible is the container of his thoughts. Then you also access his ways, steps to take, things to do. You access the thoughts, you access the ways. This is how to think and this is, th this is what, how to behave. And when you are connected to the thoughts and to the ways, then you effortlessly begin to see the acts and the wonders of God. Somebody say amen. No, the reason why we are not at the same level of results is because we haven't seen things the same way and we haven't taken the same steps one pastor was talking to me some time ago very very funny pastor he said man of God you know if you wait for me to take the kind of steps you have taken in order to see the kind of result you are seeing Person feel die in your hand. <laughs> you don't understand what I'm talking about. <laughs> he said, if you want me to exactly pass through, follow the, the shadow, and strictly receive the way, see the things you saw, and take the steps you take if you wait for me. To follow that procedure, person feet die in your hand. <laughs> he says, So just pity me and uh, relax some things for my sake. I don't know if you understand what I'm saying. I don't beg for money, I don't borrow for money, I don't preach for money, I forget to take offerings many times. But I am doing what scripture wants me to do. And I am seeing things that I must see effortlessly. So the man said, please don't allow me to pass through that. My faith may not reach that level. So instead of you waiting for me to experience that, if you have anything to give me, just dash me. <laughs> Just, 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 
Just, just, just, just pity me. I just spare me this trouble. <laughs> but I was very, I was so touched by that sincerity. The person feet die in your hand. Hallelujah. So, so this is basically what we are talking about. In the course of your study of scripture, you saw, you, 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 con, you got connected to the thought patterns of God and his ways and how he does things and expects you to do the things. And you faithfully follow him. Then you see his acts. Then you see his wonders. Somebody say it loud, amen. Secondly, what is faith? Faith is the combination of positive expectation and action. Positive expectation and action. But that's not where, what, where it stops. The combination of positive expectation and action based on scriptural revelations and convictions. That is, faith is the combination of positive expectation and action based on scriptural revelations and convictions. This is what it means. Out of the scripture, you got some revelations. And those revelations gave you very strong conviction in whatever area it is. And these convictions become fashioned into expectations, magnetic expectations with corresponding actions. Hello? Magnetic expectations with corresponding actions. Then the outcome, solid manifestations. That is faith. Faith is not just I am expecting to be rich. No. Or I am expecting to become the head of another tail. No. That expectation is, is backed up with solid action. Positive action. I will remain and be sleeping at home. My work is waiting somewhere. I have to go and get it. So you wake up in the morning when people who are going to work are going to work. Because my work is somewhere. Positive expectation with positive action. And why is that? And that is coming from where? If they are coming from revelations that gave you conviction that this thing is possible. So the day you run out of revelation, you run out of conviction. And you run out of conviction, you run out of expectation. And you run out of expectation, you run out of action. And you run out of action, you run out of manifestation. Did you see that equation? Every day you run out of revelation or insight of scripture. You run out of conviction. You don't believe anything anymore. When you run out of conviction, you run out of expectation. You don't expect anything. When you run out of expectation, you run out of the corresponding action. So you don't do anything. When you run out of all that, you run out of manifestation but that will never be your portion in Jesus name is there anybody understanding is small so, so you can see how faith is it's is, is very easy very simple finally faith is seeing possibilities out of scripture you saw how the fish swallowed Jonah or Jonah swallowed the fish or something swallowed something and then you realize that anything is possible with God you saw how the rock brought water to feed to give drink to four and a half million people or three and a half million people you saw how a 17 mile highway was made in the Red Sea seen possibilities out of scripture or maybe what God said to you out of scripture seeing possibilities out of scripture a 
accepting the responsibilities of scripture. So you saw the possibilities. You accepted the responsibilities. And experiencing the realities of those possibilities. Say that again. Faith is seeing possibilities out of scripture. You saw possibilities from scripture. You accepted the responsibilities. What you need to do for those possibilities to happen. Then you began to experience the realities of those possibilities. Somebody say aloud, Amen. Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch, I will set me upon the tower, and I will watch to see what he will say to me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. I will watch to see what he will say. I am watching to see what God says. Somebody say amen. You see responsibilities out of scripture. You accept the responsibilities of scripture. Then you begin to experience the reality of those possibilities. Somebody say a loud amen. Faith happens when the heart captures a picture of scripture. Faith happens when the heart has captured the picture of scripture. That is, you didn't just hear what God said, you saw it. Have you ever been to a, a situ, been in a situation where somebody is talking to you and you say, I see, I see. When he started talking at first, you didn't see. Then I say, I see, oh, I see. Did you see it with your two eyes? Not necessarily. With your mind's eye. Faith happens when the heart captures the picture of scripture. Apoyedeko said, the scripture that changed his mentality about divine health Matthew chapter 8 verse 17 himself took 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 that he was that was spoken by as a prophet saying himself took I need this short usher here to come you know how short you are he said when he saw himself took it's as if God opened his eyes. As if he was carrying something. Took. That is in his mind it was taken. Or if you permit me it was taken. That is a past tense of took. He says, oh, it's all T-O-O-K. Took. So that was all he needed to be healthy. That what has been taken is not there. Many of us read it, but he saw it. Am I communicating at all? There are things that you, you either you are listening to a tape or reading a passage or scripture or something and you saw it. You saw. Now, when I was a medical student, me and God, we, we agreed before I went to university. I said, Lord, I am going to school to represent you. And I, I will not fail one exam. Because I knew how medical school was. I'm not going to be the first or the last doctor. And so I'm, there's nothing, no big deal. But I'm going to represent you very well. 
Anything you want me to do, I will do. And I want you to ensure that I don't disgrace you by failing. It was a sealed deal. Then I saw in scripture, I am the head, not the tail, above only, never beneath. I saw that when Jesus entered temptation, he went to the cross once. He didn't, he didn't take a, an exam twice. I saw that God has a pen with which he can write if necessary. He wrote the Ten Commandments by his hand. So if need be, he can assist me when necessary. You know, one day I wrote an exam that I didn't, I, I told you the story many times. I, they gave a pathology exam, two years work, pathomorphology, morbid anatomy. Write the autopsy findings of a man dying of primary liver cell cancer. Autopsy finding. Autopsy means the man has died and you have done the, the post-mortem to find the cause of death. And the question say a man dying. Autopsy finding. I say a man dying, he hasn't died. Why will you do post-mortem when he hasn't died? Not knowing that it was say, <laughs> as far as medical people are concerned, if they say a the man is dying, he must die. You know, doctors can tell you, you have two more weeks to live. Am I communicating? So for them, the man is dying, he will die. And after he has died, you have done the autopsy. <laughs> what will you find? Me, I said he hasn't died. Why should you do the autopsy? My answer was two lines. The man has not died. No need for autopsy. <laughs> and the mark is over 25. One quarter. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. When I left there, I, outside the exam hall, I now understood what has happened. Not that I didn't want to understand. I said, Lord, you know I know the answer. The problem is that I misunderstood the question. So the answer you know that I know, please help me put it down. Real. Before the exam came out, one of those who marked the exam saw me at the teaching hospital. He began to congratulate me from far. He said, what a performance. <laughs> a performance for a question I didn't answer? What a performance. See, it was too much. Aye. Of course, if God assists you, it has to be too much. But this is what I'm saying. Right through that period, I never, you see, every time it was time to, after an exam, people go, some people are dodging to see, to look at the screen. Did I pass? They'll be looking from the back. Praise God, I passed. Some actually went to confirm their failure. Oh, I knew, I knew I would not pass. But beloved brothers and sisters, it never crossed my imagination one day that I will go to the screen or the exam board and see fail anatomy, fail biochemistry. It didn't cross me once. I don't know. If I had seen fail, maybe I would have told them it wasn't my paper. So, your, 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 your conviction comes to a point where there are things that are clear in your mind. They are clear to you. You see the picture of the possibility. You refuse to see otherwise. And you take the responsibility necessary. I was reading, of course, I read night till morning at times. Not to go and sleep and say, God is helping me. No. Read brutally, brutally. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? You take the relevant responsibility. And then, you're on the journey of faith. There is somebody here I prophesy to you. My God and your God is about to cause you to see possibilities out of his world. Possibilities that will translate into reality. Do you believe that? Shout the loudest, Amen. Shout the loudest, amen. Shout amen at the top of your voice. Take your seat. Is anybody getting anything at all tonight? 
So in faith, you access the thoughts of God, the ways of God, to experience the acts and the wonders of God. Then you combine positive expectation with positive action that is based on scriptural revelations and convictions. Then you see possibilities out of scripture and you accept the responsibilities of the scripture so you can see those realities. There are things that you have seen in your dreams that are about to become physical. Say a louder amen. So we said there are two understandings that build faith and we have dealt with one of them. That is the understanding of what faith is. Now let's go to the second understanding and that is the understanding of relevant scriptures. Two understanding that builds faith. It is the understanding of what faith is itself and then the understanding of relevant scriptures. And, and, and I mentioned already, scriptures that are relevant to your area of desired result. Scriptures that are relevant to the area where you want to grow faith. The understanding of those scriptures. Now, In, in, in understanding this understanding of relevant scriptures, there are two things to note. <laughs> there is a way of approaching scripture that may not produce faith. It, it will be helpful but may not directly produce faith. And there is a way of approaching script that produces faith. Anybody interested in knowing? Let's start with the other one. The, 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 the approach that may not produce faith, even though it is profitable. Please don't take it out of context. Number one, let's look at the first approach that is profitable but not necessarily produce faith. First, Ordinary reading of scripture may not build faith. Ordinary reading. It will enhance your knowledge base of scripture. And position you for deeper study. But may not directly build faith. The ordinary reading of scripture may not directly build faith. It will enhance your overall knowledge base and also equip you with what to study later. But directly it may not build faith. Am I communicating? Secondly, the memorization of scripture directly may not build faith. It will also enhance your general knowledge of the Bible and equip you with what to meditate on when you need. But it may not directly build faith. May not. Not. You know what I mean? You came out, you read various passages and you are very, very knowledgeable in scripture. It doesn't equate to faith. You have memorized a lot of passages. What that does for you. Is when you need a scripture on health. A scripture on anointing or this or that. Out of what you have memorized. You can pull it out. And meditate on it to produce results. Am I communicating? Your search to look for, I'm looking for this scripture or that, that search is reduced. But in terms of directly building faith, it may not. So what builds faith? Are you interested? If you are not, I can stop here now. Alright, in fact, let's stop here now. Yes, we cannot stop here because it's like coming to the edge of the river Jordan. So what is it that will directly Build faith. That is scriptural access that builds it. First, deeper in 
insight of scripture for clearer comprehension through the study of the word builds faith. Deeper insight of scripture for clearer comprehension through the study of the word of God builds faith. We saw that already in Acts chapter 8 verse 30 to 31 and verse 35 to 37. That is, you stepped into scripture and your understanding of scripture is deeper. Deeper than usual. One day, I saw in scripture that the weight of gold that came to Solomon yeah, 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 yeah. Or somewhere like around First Kings chapter 10, verse 30. The weight of gold that came. I looked at it again, cleaned my eye. Look at it. See person sitting and gold came to him. Ordinary people go for money. But this was a man that money was coming to. Ay, 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 ay. From that day, that it dawned on me that you can walk in the covenant with God and what others are looking for can look for you. From that day forward, maybe it has happened before that day, but since that day, things meet me everywhere. I've seen somebody running and pursuing me at New York airport. Excuse me, sir. I have something. I have something to put in your hand. Germany Airport. A place I have never been before. For the first time, somebody is running. Excuse me, sir. I have something to put in your hand. Some airport in Nigeria, somewhere here. Young lady. Who? Oh, ah, I'm so glad to see you. Please hold on. I need to. He put something in foreign currency in many zeros. Not one, not two, not three. In many zeros. At a, and I, my, what was in my heart is, did you plan to see me? Help the man there. Were you planning that I'm going to meet this man so... You, 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 you gathered some things together waiting for when to meet him. Not necessarily. I've seen somebody say, excuse me, sir, I'm so sorry to embarrass you. I have this envelope. I'm just so sorry to embarrass you. What a good embarrassment. Take your seat. Now, this is what I'm saying. It is not enough that you are tightened. It is not enough that you are a giver. It is not enough that you... What have you seen that guarantees your result? Deeper understanding of scripture for clearer comprehension because it is what you comprehend that you can apprehend. That scripture that I just shared now, the weight of gold that came to Solomon, I'm going to refresh it tonight. You know how you refresh computer? Somebody say amen. Deeper insight for clearer comprehension. Through the study of the word of God, it builds faith. All of a sudden you saw it new. As if you haven't read that passage before. It hits you. It just hits you. It builds faith. Somebody say amen. What else builds faith? Number two. Hearing the voice of God. Behind the verse 
of scripture. It builds. Hearing the voice of God behind the verse of scripture. It builds faith. That is in the course of studying the word. Hearing the voice of God behind the verse of scripture. It builds faith. That's in the course of studying the word. Or you can rephrase it like hearing the voice of God that is behind the verse of scripture. In the course of studying the word builds faith. Psalm 29 verse 3 says, the voice of the Lord is upon the waters. And what is that water? The word. According to Ephesians 5.26 That he may cleanse him by the washing of water by the wall. It builds faith. Am I communicating? Ay, 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 ay. Please, the first one I mentioned deeper inside our reference already was Acts chapter 8 verse 30 to 31 and 35 to 37. Hearing the voice of God now behind the verse of scripture in the course of studying the word you say. No weapon fashioned against you, formed against you shall prosper. Isaiah chapter 54 verse 17. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. That is, I just read the verse. Am I communicating? How many of you are following what I'm saying? Then I'm asking God, what is that passage saying? No weapon formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against you in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. And then I hear the voice of the Lord saying out of that passage. My servants, those who serve me, have an inheritance of divine protection. Ooh. I didn't read it from the passage. I heard it as the voice behind the verse. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. What am I hearing? What are you saying? I am saying... The weapon that can succeed against you shall not be manufactured. <laughs> Ooh. It shall not be manufactured, Gabadaya. And that devil is a bastard. <laughs> Let the devil to hell with you and your and your agent. You hear such a thing out of that same passage. It jumps into your spirit. You rise with an audacity. When you combine it again with other things that God shows you. So the voice behind the verse of scripture fires faith into your spirit. The more frequent, and like I said before, hearing that voice of that passage then positions you to hear the voice outside the passage. You are not studying the Bible now. The same verse, the same voice that talked to you that said, the weapon that can succeed against you will never be manufactured. That same voice said, that man asking you to bring money for business is a bad man. You put your money, except you are interested in losing it. Hallelujah. So it builds faith. That is number two. First, the insight of scripture and then the voice. The third one is seeing the word. I already mentioned that. Seeing the word 
and not just reading or hearing the word builds faith. Seeing the word of God and not just reading or hearing the word in the course of study builds faith. Seeing the word. God is saying something, you are seeing something. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1 to 3. I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower. And I will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I, will, I shall answer when I am reproved. I will watch to see what he will say. Jeremiah 2.31 He said, O generation, see ye the word of the Lord. See the word. Don't just read the word. Don't just hear the word. See the word. Somebody say amen. Somebody say louder amen. Then Moses was 120 years old when he died. Deuteronomy chapter 34 verse 7. His eye wasn't dim. His natural force was not reduced. So you see in your mind's eye on the spot. A 120 year old man not squeezing his eyes to read anything moving like the message bible said with spring in his feet with his energy like he was 30 years old 120 he was you see the bible paints the picture in scripture so you can capture the same picture and venture to feature He paints the picture of the scripture so you can capture the same picture and venture to feature in the picture you captured. He said he was 120 years old. And he said of all the prophets in the Old Testament, there is none reason greater than John the Baptist. But he that is smallest in the kingdom is greater than John. John was greater than Moses according to scripture and then you are greater than John. Which means whatever Moses experienced, you can experience. So he said that you saw the picture. You saw the picture of you on your feet at 70, if Jesus tarries. At 80, without holding walking stick. At 90, jumping like I used to jump from the altar in area one. wife used to look at me and say please don't jump again please <laughs> you say I, I know you can jump <laughs> please <laughs> hallelujah and you see the picture it becomes clear nobody doubts what he sees no, even in the world, it says seeing is believing. You study scripture, so tell you saw something. Then faith becomes automatic. I see somebody shifting level. Can I give you three counsels in the building of your faith? Number one. Ask God to open your eyes to see depths out of scripture. It builds faith. Open my eyes. Psalm 119 verse 18. Open down my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of thy law. If deeper things are the things deeper insight build faith. Don't just approach scripture carelessly. Ask God, open my eyes to behold wondrous things out of thy law. You can plead the blood in case the, the thing becomes too difficult. Because by the breaking of the bread, like we are going to do tonight, the Bible says their eyes were opened. Was that not Luke 24, 30, and 31? Their eyes were open. 
and their eyes were open and they knew him verse 30 by the breaking of the bread as he broke the bread that represents the body and the blood their eyes opened and they saw the word open my eyes let me not just ordinarily read the scripture or ordinarily memorize it let me begin to see depths to see wonders There are many things we see that we did not see. Secondly, ask God to cause you to hear his voice that is inside the verse of scripture. Let me hear your voice. Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 says, Stand in the way. And see and ask for the old parts. What is the way? The word. I am the way, the truth, and the life. That is Jesus, and that is the word. Stand in the ways. When you are inside the word, ask. Somebody say, Amen. Lord, what are you saying to me? Lord, what is this scripture saying? Lord, what do you want me to hear? Ask God to cause you to hear his voice. It explodes your faith. Finally. Ask God to turn the scriptures for you into clear pictures. These three prayers, I want you to pray tonight. Either in this sanctuary or at home. To turn the scriptures for you into clear pictures. Let me not just hear what you are saying, Lord. Let me see what you are saying. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 2 and 3. Let me see what you are saying. Ephesians 1, 16. Ephesians 1, 16, 17, 18. Eyes of your understanding being enlightened. I pray for you that your eyes will be enlightened to know what is the hope of your calling. <sighs> It's a new day for you. It's a new day for you. Who received something tonight? What you have received tonight is more like a Bible school training or um, a, con a conference of ministers or something. But it's, it has shifted your life already. Say a louder amen. As we take the communion tonight, your eyes will be open. Your ears will be open. Your understanding will be open. You will see scripture like never before. If you are a believer, stand on your feet and shout the loudest, Amen. amen. The loud most, amen. amen. We are going to pray. Seriously pray. And I plead with everybody to just be patient as we pray tonight and take the communion. Lift your hands and say, Father, thank you for your word. I am grateful to you, Lord, for your word. Father, help me in the journey of faith, in the realm of faith, in the life of faith, to grow in faith. Open my eyes. To see the wonders of scripture. Cause my ears to hear your voice out of your word. Turn the scriptures for me into pictures. Help me to see what you are saying. The time I receive that grace, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands and speak to God.